Uh, I'm glad that he emphasized that these are short and uh, not in depth because this has not been tested for time and it turned into a rabbit hole, so it's a little more in depth than these are probably supposed to be. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, so, uh, last month we talked about the parameters object uh, that sort of led me to do some digging on the methods available through strong params. Um, the easiest way to get through that was to ask sort of the basic questions uh, for anything. So, it's getting weird. Uh, who? Uh, that's an easy one. Uh, I'm Chris Fleck. I'm a developer. Uh, the, I work at Moby. I was previously at the Iron Yard. Um, this is relevant to like six people in the room, but it's, it's the Flack Brothers hello. Um, what is strong frames is a bad place to start, so we're going to start with why we need it. Uh, because people do terrible things, it's basically a way of preventing mass assignment attacks. Uh, if you can flip the admin flag to true just by using something like Postman or going into uh, the dev tools on Chrome, uh, that's not ideal. So this is something that uh, was brought up in, it was made part of default Rails in Rails 4. It was originally, before that, a gem um, from DHH. Uh, this is just the, the straight off the page documentation on it. Uh, explaining essentially that when you try to do just an uh, assignment directly from the params object, you'll get uh, forbidden attributes exception, it won't go through. So you have to pass it through uh, this bottom method, the person params, give it an explicit permit step. That will allow you to then use it for assignment in creation and update. Um, that's just the shortest version of what, uh, when is not a super relevant question. I don't know where I'm asking all these questions. I guess it's my fault I set it up. Uh, just do it all the time. It's a uh, good protection to have. Uh, where is, we're still with the relevant questions. I don't know, just do it everywhere. Uh, <laughs> probably, there's, so there's, there is an asterisk there. We'll get to that later, but just do it everywhere. Um, so how, this is the important part. What do you do, what is it? Uh, the first step you get is this require step. Uh, it's just exactly what it says on tin. It requires a certain parameter. So uh, say we have an object, we're passing in the wrong key in that top line. Uh, so when we require object, we get a 400 error with this error logged. Uh, param is missing or value is empty object. And we just get an empty hash back along with that error. So. Uh, that's the first step done. That's the require. So the simplest use case is give it the right key in the require step, and then give it the uh, sub keys you want to permit. So we gave it key one, key two, and key zero, which is actually not permitted. So when we run that through our controller, um, we get a logged error, but this doesn't hit a hard stop. It doesn't hit a 400 code. Okay. okay. Don't mind me. Just deer in the headlights like, yeah, sorry. Uh, so it will tell you if you're passing an unpermitted parameter, but it will still let through the things that are permitted. So that's nice. Uh, this is the, the most basic, the simplest use case. This will get you through most everything, but there are more advanced things. Uh, what if one of your keys accepts an array? Uh, well, any scalar value is okay, so a basic string, array, and uh, an object or hash. So to do that, we just tell it that in the, uh, in the permit step. So key one is going to be an array. So we redefine our method. We get back the results that we're expecting. Uh, one thing to note, when we use that require step, it chops off that object uh, top level key. It just gives us what's in the key that we required. That will come up again later. Uh, so what if it's an array of objects? Uh, right now, our current method breaks uh, because it's trying to call permit on this array that's within the objects key. So there's two ways we can manage this. Uh, this is where we're here. This is where it's coming up, uh, the two options. You can either just map over the objects object that you're given, the objects hash, uh, which is not actually hash. It's, as discussed last week, an action controller's parameter object, which inherits from hash within different access. So it has all of the hash methods available to it. Uh, unrelated point of order, I'm not talking about any of those right now. Yes? Oh yeah, is that small? Maybe. I don't know. 
Is that an option? Nope, that doesn't do anything. How about? Not you, boo. Boo. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't want to. Uh, I'll make this slideshow available to everyone. Uh, quick plug for slides.com and uh, what's the JS library that does this? Someone reveal JS. Uh, it's great. Uh, use it. It's good for sharing slideshows after you give a talk that's too small for everyone to see. Um, so yeah, there's, there's kind of two options for how we can do this. Uh, when we do that require on the objects and then map over it, we get uh, that object's outer layer thing chopped off. Um, so here's the results of the two possible methods. We either get just what was in that object when we do the require step and map over it, or if we just do a permit without any require step, then our resulting object still has that object's top level key. Uh, it just kind of depends on what you want your data to look like. The only recommendation I would make is be consistent uh, with whichever one you choose. I'm willing to be corrected on that if there's a better way or a reason that one of these is more efficient than the other. Uh, we're having a discussion after this, so we'll just make it part of the discussion, I don't know. Uh, you just do, do whichever one you need, live your truth, it's, it's your job. Uh, so nested objects, uh, we, can, we can manage that too. Um, if you're using accepts nested attributes for, make sure that you call that key. Uh, whatever your object name is, underscore attributes, so that it can accept those attributes uh, the Rails way. Also, I didn't note, uh, we're, we're permitting uh, on all of these, we're permitting the underscore destroy key as well. Uh, that's for, I'm sending the destroy flag when you're sending these, uh, these requests through. So yeah, uh, that's possible. But things can get uh, uh, messier when we have arrays of nested objects. Um, this is uh, real ugly. I just, you, if you want to dwell on that for a minute, um, don't. Uh, but just putting together what we've done so far, uh, what we've covered in those two prior examples separately, we can still manage this. So we're mapping over that top level objects. We take the uh, the each instance of object in there, permit key one, key two, and then let in the array of nested object attributes with its keys. So this looks really complex, but uh, when you get the slides and you can see what I've done later, you'll see that we're just putting together two relatively simple things that we, we covered earlier. So it's not that bad. Um, this gives us the, the results that we expect. It gives us all those keys with the top level objects key chopped off. Uh, I did this one with the uh, pry pretty print because it's a little easier to see than just the, the vomit that actually comes out when, uh, when you don't pretty print it. Uh, so there are uh, edge cases where it gets a whole lot messier than this, uh, like, there we go. Um, yeah, so if our top level objects object, hash parameter, is a, an array itself, and then within that has nested objects that are also arrays. You see where this is going. It's, it's the same thing again. This looks like a hot mess, but it's still the same thing that we went through. Uh, the one difference here, uh, and as I said, I'm, I'm not covering, this is going back to a, a, a too fast aside I gave you a minute ago. Uh, since this inherits from hash within a different access, you get access to fetch and dig and a lot of those, um, I'm not covering that stuff here. If you want to get creative with those and you're familiar with those, uh, go for it. I'm just covering the stuff that is actually defined on the action controller's parameter object type. So uh, here's one of those methods, is extract uh, with a bank. It sets, um, sets whatever, you, it returns the key that you're extracting and then removes it from the top level uh, parameter object. The reason that's relevant is on a few slides back, you get those warnings that say there's an unpermitted parameter. Uh, so nested objects no longer has that underscore attributes after it, so our normal Rails accepts nested attributes for isn't gonna work here. So we have to extract that into its own key. So on, is this visible at all? Should I bother explaining this or just say, look at it when you get it? Anybody? In the back two rows, can you see what's happening here? Not at all, okay. 
Uh, I promise this works. Um, I, I'm not going to show my work, just in, enjoy this kitten. Uh, look at it when you get the link for the slides later. Uh, but, but basically what we're doing is appending that underscore attributes so that Rails nested attributes works as expected. So we get a little bit of light serialization using the extract method. Uh, that will make more sense when you can see the actual code. Uh, so yeah, it gets even worse. What if the nested objects that we're given is uh, an empty array and there's nothing in it? Or uh, we're, we're given nil. Ideally, this is not going to happen because you're in control of the front end, right? No. Uh, sometimes you can't rewrite a, a complex front end service that you're trying to interface with. Tony's not here, so I can't give him shitty looks for reporting. Uh, Coley, I'm sorry, you get the shitty look tonight. Um, the, the, one of the things that, that uh, taught me this was actually experience working with Fetch. Uh, it doesn't work the way you think it does. You should instead uh, do this. Give it an option. Attributes or empty array. So if attributes doesn't exist, just give it an empty array and try to map over that. It's the same thing that we did before. We're just mapping over an array. If it's an empty array, it returns itself. It's not going to do anything. Uh, again, this is a, a, maybe a little too crunchy to try and go over in a talk, but you'll get access to all this, uh, and it'll make a little more sense when you can see the code. Uh, so this brings us to the last question, why, uh, I don't know, just why do any of this, it doesn't, it's, it's awful. Uh, but it's actually not that awful going through it step by step. Just look at the simplest pieces, sort of the main point that I want to give as a takeaway, look at the simplest pieces. Uh, it was like two or three lines that we started with and then we looked at another two lines. And even this mess is just those lines all put together in a single method. Um, so the last thing that we didn't talk about was the asterisk. Uh, the last scalar value that you can permit, we did just a basic key and value as a string. We did a uh, value as an array. Uh, if you want to just permit the whole hash and everything inside of it, permit bang, don't do this. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bad pattern to use on a regular basis. Uh, the one use case is if you have like uh, programmatically generated keys that you don't have control over. They're just uh, dynamic keys. Um, so it's it's just sort of the fuck it method. I don't recommend it, but that's, that's pretty much the only use case I can, I can see for it. Uh, so yeah, that was kind of quick. It was a little deeper than uh, I had intended. Like I said, it turned into a rabbit hole. Uh, hopefully when you can see the slides, and uh, this is probably going to go up as a video at some point, you can follow along with that, and it will make more sense then. Uh, if you followed it enough to form any questions, do you have any questions? What, what was that? Were those real examples uh, that you took from code that you have? Um, yes. I mean, I, tur I turned it into just a genericized key one, key two yeah. object. But uh, yeah, most of this came from a struggle with uh, when, when we moved up to 4.2, we tried to put everything on strong parameters. And uh, I naively picked the uh, probably, you know, definitely the most difficult controller to convert. Um, and I learned a lot through that process. It's actually still not merged because uh, the first time I tried to merge it, we broke prod, but that's fine. It's what reverts for. Uh, any other questions? I have a question like, for the room. Uh, anyone else? Okay. I thought that was a I thought that was an edge case, but that's a little comforting to know that this this happens elsewhere. Good. I'm glad. Yeah, that that was the thing that I broke uh, production with is that I had called a key within itself and. <laughs> Don't don't yeah. do that. <laughs> we did it. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm open to questions after. If you just don't want to raise your hands, or again, uh, if you get the slides later, uh, give me online. Or I'm in, in both the Slack and Flowdoc channel, so uh, happy to answer questions that way too. 
And apologies if that was totally unintelligible. Uh, like I said, it turned into a deep rabbit hole, and I'm not super prepared for public speaking, but there you go. This is what you got.